Hi everyone, this is Intellivision CEO Tommy Tellerico. And on our 40th anniversary, I wanted to share with everybody uh, the latest and greatest uh, news about our controller. Um, you know, we've been developing and designing the controller for uh, over two years now. And, um, you know, it's always changing as you test and you do focus groups and focus testing and you try things out and you build it and then you tear it down and you want to make it better and you switch things out and this and that. So uh, I want to give everyone the, the latest update because uh, there, there's a bunch of updates. Uh, let me show you the latest controller. Uh, check it out. One of the things you'll probably notice the most is that the two buttons on the sides, left and the right, are now separated and uh, closer to the edge on both sides. The, the reason for this is that, you know, the great thing about the controller is with the gyroscope and things like the accelerometer, you can, you can hold the controller any way. You can hold it vertically, horizontally to the left, horizontally to the right. You can hold it upside down and, and, and use it like that. Um, and whatever way the screen will orient to, um, you know, wh wherever you're holding it, um, and it gives you just a lot more options for lefties and righties and, and different ways to play different games. Um, but splitting the buttons, when you hold it uh, horizontally, these now act as uh, like shoulder buttons or triggers as you would see on uh, other systems and stuff. So that was uh, really important. The other thing you can see from this angle, you'll notice that the back of the buttons are raised up just a little bit. You can kind of just see them here in the in the in the back there, and that makes such a huge difference. I wanted to have it so you know your fingers didn't slide off or, or your thumbs didn't you know kind of slip away uh, when when you're uh, hitting those. And so uh, you also notice the buttons are now recessed in there because when you hold the controller vertically now and your 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 palms not pressing in uh, those bottom buttons uh, when holding it vertically so but anyway the, the the cups as well the dishes if you will of the uh, buttons they're very deep um, and it, you can really you know they, they just feel really nice uh, in your hands one of the uh, things I I don't think anyone really liked too much about the original Intellivision controllers with that is a little tiny rectangular hard rubbery uh, buttons so we've gone completely opposite direction here super duper comfortable buttons now the other thing you'll notice too the change you'll see the buttons uh, have LED lights kind of around them uh, you'll see in the four corners the the blues there um, and those are LED lights so the the buttons will light up and the area around the buttons will light up so you don't have to say hey mom hit the R3 button and she's or the Z1 button she's like well, what are you talking about um, you know you can say mom hit the red button or whatever so uh, of course our disc lights up as well um, and one other thing too you'll notice right in the center of the screen you'll see a little tiny uh, dimple there uh, and so you always kind of know where your uh, your your thumb or finger is in the middle of the screen without having to look down uh, makes makes a big uh, big difference here's another picture uh, more of a different angle uh, you can see and again you can see how deep those dishes uh, go in the uh, the buttons so you can wire the controller to the uh, system uh, if you'd like uh, for, for battery purposes but um, you know we're doing a lot of battery testing now and right now we're looking at you know kind of anywhere from five to six hours which is pretty good considering the, the style of games uh, that we're doing. You know, um, we don't see this as, hey, let's sit down and play games for, for 20 hours at a time. It's more of, you know, kind of a, a casual family uh, system where, um, you know, you might play one game for 20, 30 minutes and go on another game for like 15, 20 minutes and go on another game, uh, you know, kind of like that. So, um, you know, battery life is super important, uh, but we did want to give the, you know, uh, the option to to plug them in uh, if you wanted but that's a really nice angle there 
Um, here's another uh, complete side view now. And you'll see that the bottom of the controllers, see how they kind of flare out a little bit? It's almost like a, a, a bar of soap. Um, and that feels really good when you're holding the controller um, horizontally. You know, they, they almost it kind of gives you... Um, you know, the feeling of, uh, it's not just like a flat surface, but I don't want to really call it a grip, but it's, um, you know, it, it just feels really good in your hands. And then the other uh, thing that we've never shown each other, this is the first time we've ever shown this, is the bottom of the controller. This is what it looks like um, behind. Now, um, this is your your fingers fit really nicely into these uh, slots, no matter which way you're holding it. Um, it. It's pretty cool, pretty unique. Again, you can see those buttons flaring out a little bit uh, on the edges uh, so that your fingers or thumbs don't uh, fall off. You'll also notice the contact there on the uh, right hand side of the screen, those three uh, three metallic things. Those are the contacts uh, to hold uh, or to to charge the controller in the base of the unit. Now, uh, over almost a year and a half ago, about a year and three months ago, when we first announced the machine and we talked about wireless charging, we thought we were going to go with the Qi charging. It's spelled Q-I, pronounced Qi. And that's kind of like the wireless charging that a lot of, you know, the mobile phones uh, use. I'll tell you the reason we didn't do that is that it's not as fast and it's not as good as this contact charging. So at the end of the end, and it's more expensive as well. So, you know, we're trying to keep the, the price of the console uh, as least possible as we can. Of course, there's tariffs that may or may not be coming. So there's lots of things to, to take into consideration. But not only is a Qi charging more expensive, but it's less reliable and it takes longer to charge. So uh, so it's still wireless charged, uh, wireless charging, except we went with contacts instead of the, uh, the, the Qi charging uh, on that. Now, you'll also notice on the top of the controller, which is the left uh, on the screen here, you'll see that's where the lanyard goes, the, the um, you know, where you're going to be holding it because we do have, you know, use a lot of motion controls um, with the accelerometer and the gyroscope. So, but if you can imagine your thumb um, is going to be on the disc or on the one of the uh, side buttons. So uh, again, you really you can hold the controller in a whole bunch of uh, different ways, which is really cool. But yeah, I just wanted to show you those things. Now what I'd like to do is bring you into the office at Intellivision and introduce you to just a few of the members on the team who are working on the controller. I want to introduce you to Jeff. Jeff Barnhouse. Now, Jeff comes from us. Uh, Jeff was in the Navy, and he worked on nuclear subs. Am I lying? Am I making this up, Jeff? No, you're not. I am not making this up. Jeff worked on nuclear subs, but he also worked at NASA. Jeff. Yeah. Worked on the Mars rover project, right. more importantly, um, which is pretty amazing. And um, so Jeff's been, uh, you know, does a lot of this stuff. Whatever that is. No, this and uh, so show me, show me the controller though. You got one there. You yep. see, we see the Amico logo. Now, t talk to me a little bit about the screen and how we uh, how we updated, okay. decided to do. So this screen uh, was our old screen. Uh, it's resistive touch. Um, we're going to a new one, capacitive touch. It'll be a glass front. Um, be about a million times slicker. Um, so we, we kind of all made that decision to say, you know what, let's spend extra money to make it as awesome as it can be. Yeah, it, it raises it really, you know, 20 years into the future, I think, right. from where it was. So right. It's, it's pretty great. And we see, the, uh, we see the Amico logo there on the screen. Um, where's that, that demo for the, um, right. for the uh, gyroscoping accelerometer? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so this one will 
Oops. It'll track which way you're holding it. Um, it's a simple demo, but uh, you know, it shows it working. Shows it working, exactly. <laughs> which is important. And uh, then there's also a touchscreen demo. Right. Just to make sure it's all there. And then, really cool part Look at that. is the, the disc. The disc is what makes this really, really special. And you now we've got some patent pending things. Yeah. Um, can I talk about it? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We got to save some stuff. Okay. Well, we got some cool stuff coming up. That's right. Exactly. Cool. All right. Thanks, Jeff, for showing us around. You bet. Rocking. Okay. Now here's Kevin Alvarado. Now Kevin. Huh? What? Oh, hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> now please tell everyone because. You didn't know I was doing this until today. It, you wore that shirt without me asking you to, correct? That is correct. All right. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, I just... It's like, this guy's a... towing the company line. He wears his T-shirt. But no, you wore that No, today. I grabbed the shirt. It's a good shirt. It's a comfortable shirt, too. It's so a comfortable it's... shirt. That's very important. Yeah, so I, I just grabbed it today. Okay, just... good, good. So Kevin's one of our software engineers. And um, what is your primary... Purpose. You're working with our uh, creating our OS, our operating system. Yes, I'm. I'm working on a, a low level for the Amico console. Mm -hmm. um, currently, what I'm doing is I'm working with the others to produce the um, connections between the controllers and the Amico, either through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections. And so, talk to me a little bit about the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi with the Amico talking to the console itself. You've been running some tests. They've been very positive. So what we've been doing is uh, running some proof of concepts to make sure that the controllers are actually communicating not only to the Amico, but the Amico is passing on the controller events to the games. So that way the developers have access to the controller events that will drive their games. So some of the preliminary tests is, can we do it over Bluetooth? Is latency going to be acceptable? Is, is the button mashing, are we missing any commands or anything within the game? So I've been kind of doing some testing and making sure that everything's running smoothly and that the games will start to run and receive the commands from the controllers. And how's it been going so far? All the tests have been pretty positive. It's yeah? going pretty good. We're getting really good results. Um, we've got a lot of good team of people here that uh, helping me when I need it. So I th we're, we're going to make really good progress, and it should be great. Awesome. Cool, man. Thanks a lot. No problem. Do you have an Amico Underoos on? Uh, that? No. No, okay. Do we have them on the marketplace? <laughs> Not yet. Just my own personal ones. I'll have to get you a pair. I don't need yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm here with John Alvarado, who's our software technical director. That's right. I got it right. Got it. Um, <laughs> so many titles. And me and John um, first met each other almost 30 years ago, yeah. uh, working back at Virgin. And uh, we worked on Monopoly together the, for the, right. was it DOS, right? Or right. Windows? No, it was DOS, a DOS. Yeah, yeah Monopoly for Monopoly DOS. Deluxe for DOS. That's right. You were the programmer. I did audio. And this guy over here did the art. That's it. That's Mike Deeds. He's the uh, art director, uh, art animation for uh, many games like Earthworm Jim and Disney's Aladdin and all that. Anyway, so we got the team here. But uh, I knew when we started uh, up in television, this new version, I knew I had to have John uh, on board. And uh, John's worked for many, many companies over the years. And But one of the things, well, John, why don't you tell them kind of what, what, you have many, you know, many things you're working on, but specifically in regard to the controller, you've come up with the whole, uh, you know, our, our whole concept of sure. be being able to play mobile connecting. Sure, this is the real hardware controller here, yeah. which has a touch screen, a disc, it's got buttons on it, although this is not the final one, we're adjusting the position of the buttons yeah. on the final version. But we have a simulation of this controller on our, on mobile phones that people will be able to download for free from the App Store and be able to use on their Amico console for additional controllers because the console comes with two of these. Right. Uh, but if you have four kids or, you know, however big your family is, everyone has cell phones, you can download the free app and it looks something like this. Now it's looking for an Amico right now, but I don't want to have, I don't have one turned on, so it's just right. keep searching. 
But you can see it, ha it has the disc, and that's the touch screen part there, and we've got where the buttons are. And we have extra buttons on here just because... Show the disc spinning again. Yeah, because it's... <laughs> these extra buttons aren't on the real controller, but on a mobile device, since I don't have actual top and bottom buttons, it's kind of easy to have buttons here. We'll make that more configurable to you. As in the yeah, this version. isn't any final stuff. It's just, but, but, but one, it works. Right, and this is one that we've used as an initial prototype for developers who are building our games to be able to test their games before they have access to the actual hardware controller. So it's been really handy in helping us get our demos up and ready for the big show we had at E3 and post E3 continuing to work on the games until we, we'll have these really soon now for developers. Right, and, and the great thing about mobile is that everything that's on your mobile you have is in our controller right. force feedback speaker microphone right. um, gyroscope. gyroscope accelerometer right. all the important things for gameplay lights around the lights disc and, uh, touch screen yeah, color touch screen of course there. There's a little glowing light going there but um, yeah. we can change the colors on the buttons it'll be lit up yeah Awesome. Cool stuff. And you've built this all kind of yourself from scratch. Yeah, I built this up from scratch, figured out what our interface is going to be like on the under the hood, what, what the programmers of games have to work with in order to interface to the controller itself and the console. It's called the Programming API for Amico. That's what I've developed and have provided to the developers and supported them when they had issues and questions and bugs, you know, fixing all those for them. And that's the thing, too. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, we've created a whole back-end system where developers, you're in communication with developers all the time. Absolutely. And we, we have a pretty good, you know, pretty good number of developers out there, but it's small compared compared to, uh, you know, what's on the App Store, how many developers there are <laughs> in mobile apps. So we provide um, really great customer customer support to them they have we have a forum where they can ask questions but they they all have my skype number and my email and even my phone number if there's an emergency and they can contact me at any point to you know get through their issues or if they have a bug and they need some help you know i can help them right away so we we've, we've taken a very hands-on approach to supporting our developers so that we can have the best quality games done on time that's right and um what would you say is your main reason for joining in television Oh, well, it's just the mission. When I first heard you announce what you're going to do on Facebook, you had that whole teaser that you're going dropping clues about this big thing you're going to do. And then when you actually announced it, that you're going to make a console that's family friendly to get families playing games together again, kids and, and adults interacting next to each other, having fun, creating great memories like we used to have when we were young playing the old Atari, you know, uh, games and, and television games and Coleco games, those consoles were just all local multiplayer and you would sit and play with your friends and just have great times. I, I That just resonated with me so much, it just really hit me in the heart that that's uh, something that kids and recent generations have just completely missed out on with the, with the modern consoles and I think that's really important for their development and for society in general for kids to have more social interaction with their parents and with their peers face to face not just being in a dark room with the headset on playing games you know online that's that's an isolating experience even though you are playing with other people so it just really resonated with me and just that same day as soon as you announced it I, I contacted <laughs> Bill Fisher who is the VP of technology here and said hey Bill I want to be a part of this I don't know whenever you guys are hiring let me know and so um, I became available before you guys started hiring, but I said, "Hey, <laughs> I'm available now. Let's. This is my window of opportunity. Let's let's make this happen." So. And uh, the shirt you're wearing is has nothing to do. It's just completely random, yeah. and it's not a hint in any way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, developers get free T-shirts. Right. Wear. That's it. Yeah, we got. You, you I get, have a large stock of free T-shirts. Yes, that's from it. All kinds of companies uh, in technology and software. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome, Tommy. Well, there you go. That shows you a little bit of uh, some of the people who are working on this system. We have about 20 people full-time in-house uh, working on this, but uh, you're able to meet a few of them there. And, um, you know, the controller might seem uh, crazy to uh, folks because you're so used to, you know, the controllers that we've been, uh, have over the last 20 years. Uh, but I would just uh, ask people to keep an open mind because when you play the games the way we're creating them, uh, 
the controller makes a lot more sense, right? If you're thinking of the controller thinking, how the heck am I going to play Call of Duty on that? Uh, well, you're not. That's the idea <laughs> is that, you know, the, the games that we're doing are, you know, part mobile like uh part casual like but part arcade like as well so we kind of combine the best of both worlds and uh yeah you really you really have to experience it and feel it and play it um to to really kind of understand and, and get it so hopefully uh, you'll keep an open mind because i know it does seem like it's a, a crazy thing and i totally understand uh, understand that but um I think when people have a chance to play it, um, it'll all start to make sense. And there's also uh, a few main things that we have not shown yet, and uh, we won't be showing till uh, June of 2020. So a lot more surprises still to come with the controller, but uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight as to where we're at right now. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, if you haven't already, please sign up to our mailing list at IntellivisionAmico.com. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. Bye.